Hey, Keith, I know you've been looking forward to this episode. It, and why is that? <laughs> because today we're going to talk about one of your favorite problem solving techniques, brain writing. It's true. Brain writing <laughs> is brain writing is awesome. Uh, <laughs> now, last time we shared with the audience uh, idea sprinting, that mm -hmm. fast paced, beat the clock uh, problem solving technique that allows you to very quickly get lots of ideas on the table. It's super effective. Today, we're going to do something very, very different. Brain writing. It's a silent, shh, collaborative writing <laughs> technique. Brain writing solves one of the biggest challenges we face, that everyone faces, in group brainstorming sessions, and that is dominating personalities. Ooh, just hearing the word gives me the shudders. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, anyone and everyone who's ever done a, a brainstorming session has had the experience of one or two people totally dominating the conversation while others in the room just sit there quietly and remain silently. And, and you know, to be fair, uh, per dominating personalities have a way of making people feel either intimidated or reluctant to share their ideas because they're afraid of getting judged. So we call those quiet people the silent thinkers in the room. And brain writing is specifically designed to, to level the playing field so that everyone in the session has an equal opportunity to share their ideas and to contribute in finding a solution. So Keith, since you like brain writing so much, why don't you tell us how it works? Great, I will. And, and you know, by the way, I just want to make the point, um, those dominating personalities, you know, they're not evil. Right. Uh, in fact, they're often some of the most prolific idea generators. But the point is, because they're so confident, because they have so much to say, it sometimes prevents others in the session from being able to share. So this is a technique to use to ensure that that happens. Mm -hmm. And you know, Mitchell, it's true. I love this technique so much. Anybody that's participated in one of our smart storming training sessions or a session that we facilitated for one of our clients where I was present knows how much I like this technique and how much I enjoy seeing the reaction of people in the room when they see what kind of results they get. It's mm -hmm. really pretty amazing. So uh, first, it's important to point out uh, at the start that brain writing is a group technique. So this is one that you really can't use when you're working by yourself, unless you have multiple personalities that you want to bring to bear on the on the topic. But it, no, it really is a group. It really is a group technique. You should have at least three or more people to use this technique. And probably six or seven people is the most that you would want to have working on it together. So if you have more than that number of people in your brainstorming session, you wanna break down into multiple groups. So for example, if you have 12 people in the session, you break down into two groups of six mm -hmm. and each group does their own brain writing exercise. Right. So to begin with, the participants should sit around a table or if you're not at a table, you should arrange yourselves in a kind of a circular configuration and you'll understand why in just a minute. Now, when we start, each person in the activity should have their own clean sheet of paper and a pen or something to write with. So again, everybody has a sheet of paper, not one for the group, but everybody has their own. Then the person leading the, ses the session introduces the problem that's going to be solved. So let's just say, for example, uh, we were tackling something like, in what ways can we increase sales with our existing customers at least 15% over the next six months. That might be the type of problem, just as an example. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, that's a great example. So at that point, everybody would then quickly and silently write down one idea, right, that they have to solve the challenge. And this should occur with no conversation and no discussion. The goal is really to be spontaneous and really write down the first idea that comes to mind. Be, be really just whatever snaps into your mind there. Then everyone passes their paper <laughs> uh, over to the person next to them, to their neighbor, and be sure that everyone passes in the same direction. It could be to the left or the right, but you want to avoid any kind of confusion and have everybody go either clockwise or counterclockwise in passing their paper. Then. Uh, next, everyone will then read the idea that's written down on uh, their paper. And then just below that, 
they'll write down an idea contribution of their own. And they can either build on the idea or try to improve the previous idea that's there, or they can add a completely new idea that's inspired by the first one. As long as they contribute and there's no conversation. That's right. Anything goes. And then yeah. you just continue uh, that process. You just repeat the process. Pass the sheet again to the neighbor on, on your side. Um, read every idea that's on the sheet handed to you, not just the last one that was written, and see what that collection of ideas inspires. Mm. And is there a way you can add to it, make it better, or does it inspire a totally new idea? And then you just keep doing that until everyone gets their own original sheet back. It's like that children's game telephone, except ah. that you're not, you're not whispering ideas to each other, you're writing them and passing them in a circle. Now, at that point, when everybody gets their original sheet back, they should each have as many idea contributions on their page mm. as there are people participating. So in other words, if you have five people working together, everyone mm. in that group will have five ideas, their own original idea and the contribution offered by everybody in the group. Now, if you do the math, five people, five ideas on each page, that's mm -hmm. 25 ideas in total wow. for solving your challenge in just a few minutes time. It's pretty wow. amazing. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, and so once everybody gets their sheets back, they read through their ideas and everyone shares the best ideas they've accumulated and those ideas are recorded for further discussion. Right. And what's great about it, as you can see, is that there's no conversation and there's no opportunity for anyone to really dominate. That's, it's like genius, right? Everybody has an equal opportunity to contribute ideas uh, through every round of it. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah. And, you know, Mitchell, when you think about it, that's exactly the way mm -hmm. a really well-run, well-planned brainstorming session is supposed to function, right? Everybody's supposed to contribute. We mm -hmm. should be able to get the benefit of everyone's ideas, and brain writing makes that possible. Brain writing is so simple, we actually have clients that use it through email, and they came to us with that idea. We didn't, we didn't make it up for them. So right. all they do is they establish an email sequence ahead of time. They decide who's going to email to whom, and then uh, they put their problem out there and start emailing those, uh, those ideas around in that virtual circle they set, they've set mm. up. I mean, you could even do this uh, with a little bit of planning and coordination using a chat function. On, right. uh, on, a, on a web conferencing platform like Skype or Zoom. It really is an outstanding, uh, an outstanding process. So give brain writing a try the next time you and your team have a challenge to tackle. I think you're gonna be amazed at how quickly and how mm -hmm. quietly you can, <laughs> you can come up with game-changing ideas. Uh, and by the way, as a reminder, Complete instructions for brain writing, idea sprinting, and 18 other techniques are in our book, Smart Storming, The Game-Changing Process for Generating Bigger, Better Ideas. Uh, the book is available on Amazon, everywhere online, and through our website if you're interested. That's right. So don't miss our next episode because we're going to teach you one of the most unusual and most fun problem solving techniques we use in our brainstorming sessions. It's called bad to good. And if you've ever had a bad idea, you're going to love it. Oh, and Mitchell, I've had plenty of bad <laughs> ideas. <laughs> Haven't we all? <laughs> Haven't we all? So until next time, keep your brain writing and think more innovatively. Do you have questions about how you and your team can think more innovatively? Email them to us at partners at smartstorming.com or contact us through our website at smartstorming.com.